people don't want to talk about it, but we have to. It's happening so often. My life in college was completely destroyed by something that was out of my control, and that's just an injustice that I feel obligated to help remedy. Six years ago, Julia Dixon was sexually assaulted on campus by a fellow student. She's speaking out about her experience for the first time. I thought, well, that's never going to happen to me because I don't drink. I've never drank. I've never done drugs. I didn't go places where this happens. So I was doing everything right and I was being a good girl and it wasn't going to be me. Julie is one of a growing number of students filing complaints against their universities for the way they say their reports of sexual assault were dealt with. According to government figures, one in five women in America is sexually assaulted during their time at college or university, with a large majority of attacks committed by someone they already know. Survivors of rape on college campuses suffer from high levels of post-traumatic stress disorder, depression and drug and alcohol abuse. And the rates of reported rapes are staggeringly low at just 12%. Many say it's not just coming forward that's a big hurdle to overcome, it's also the response they get from the institutions they turn to for help. Typically, students who've been sexually assaulted seek help through the university system itself, going to police on campus and college officials, rather than taking their complaints outside. Julia says she received some support from the University of Akron, Ohio, in the immediate aftermath of the incident. Her attacker denied the assault, and while campus police investigated, she tried to pursue him through the university's disciplinary process. This, she says, is where the problems began. They also told me that he would have to be in the room with me when I testified, and he would get to ask me direct questions about what happened. <laughs> and three days after he raped me, I wasn't in any sort of emotional state to even be anywhere in the vicinity of him, let alone have a conversation with him about what he did. And their remedy to that was, oh, maybe he can have someone there and they can't, he can ask the questions through them, but he still has to be in the room. And I said, I, I'm sorry, I can't possibly, you can't expect me to go through with that right now. I mean, it, it is Friday and I was raped Tuesday. So at that point I decided, I'll just wait until my rape kit comes back because I know that I'm telling the truth and then I'll be able to get him expelled. Unfortunately, I, what I thought would take eight, maybe ten weeks, ended up taking a, over a year and a half. And in that time, there was, my hands were tied. I felt like there was nothing I could do. I, I felt completely helpless. What changes do you think your university and others across America need to really bring in to help survivors like yourself? I wish that the university would have taken into consideration the stress that I was very clearly suffering from. To me, it felt like they didn't really know how to handle it and didn't really care to try. I received no sort of help that semester. I had no um, assistance with my classes. I had no excused absences. I was treated the same way that everyone else in my class was treated. But I was dealing with a very severe trauma. Last month, President Obama launched a task force to address the issue of campus assault. The stigma around the issue means it's impossible to know the exact scale of the problem. The one in five figure released by the White House is based on several studies, including research from 2007, in which nearly 7,000 students at two large public universities were interviewed. Protecting young women and men from sexual violence and ensuring colleges do more to respond is now a priority at the highest level. My hope and intention is, is that every college president who has not personally been thinking about this is going to hear about this report and is going to go out and figure out who's in charge on their campus of responding properly and what are the best practices and are we doing everything that we should be doing. And if you're not doing that right now, uh, I want the students at the school to ask the president what he's doing or she's doing. These images are part of Project Unbreakable and show survivors of sexual assault photographed with quotes from their attackers. It's just one example of growing activism. More survivors are coming forward to share their experiences and are taking part in a national conversation.
Universities don't treat it as an epidemic. They don't learn from each other. They treat it as a PR problem. And we're starting to notice that. And now that we are more comfortable sharing our stories, we're more willing to organize, and now we're holding our schools accountable for the first time. And now we're considered a force, even. Andrea Pino says she was sexually assaulted during her first year at university. In January 2013, she filed a federal complaint against her college, the University of North Carolina, Chapel Hill. She's now one of the country's leading activists on the issue of college rape. Along with other survivors, Andrea set up a national advice and support network. In so many ways, the universities think that they can contain it and that they can deter it by, you know, making them do book reports, by making them take time off, by making them just keep quiet. And they don't look at it as a holistic problem. They don't, they don't treat that person like a criminal. They treat that person like a student who made a mistake. And sexual assault is not a mistake, and it has to go back to that. The US Department of Education's Office of Civil Rights, the OCR, is currently investigating more than 35 complaints nationwide, including the University of North Carolina, Chapel Hill which is awaiting the findings in its case. And I think what we want at the end of the day is this policy to be read from both reporting party, responding party, as being fair and balanced. And it in the past year, the college has revised its policies and hired a new team to improve its response to sexual violence. Howard Callum's the lead coordinator. The reporting party. What we've done here has not been because of the OCR investigation. I think that the university recognized even before the complaints were filed that we needed to do things better and differently and have taken a number of measures to provide increased support to survivors, to improve its complaint processing system, to uh, ramp up its education programs. One of the biggest challenges is changing attitudes over what is and isn't acceptable sexual behaviour on many college campuses. This workshop's about giving students the confidence to speak up if they witness inappropriate behaviour amongst their peers. Is somebody touching someone on a dance floor in a way that makes people feel uncomfortable? Um, and even before that, talking about behaviours before you leave your house, so talking to your friends about... Um, how much they're going to be drinking. To what extent do you think a macho culture means that people don't want to step in? It's hard. I mean, people grow up with it. This is what they're taught from day one, that um, men are, like, it's essentialism. Men are a certain way, women are a certain way. Um, men are supposed to act a certain way, women are supposed to act a certain way. And that's one of the things that we're indirectly trying to challenge, the fact that you are supposed to pursue or think about sex in this way. Campaigners say conviction rates for cases of sexual assault on college campuses are still too low. Julie is one of the few survivors who did eventually get some justice through the legal system. By then I was a junior in college and I had lost a scholarship and I moved off campus, got a job to support the lack of scholarship that I had. Um, and he had already left campus. In a statement to Newsnight, the University of Akron, Ohio said... The University of Akron has not received any formal complaint, nor has the university been informed by any federal agency that a complaint has been filed. With limited exceptions, it would be inappropriate and a violation of federal privacy laws for us to discuss information in any student's education record. The university policy and practice in sexual assault matters is to separate alleged victims and perpetrators in all phases of the investigation and conduct process. Furthermore, the university has in place a robust system to support students who need help when they are facing situations that are potentially harmful. Unfortunately for the victim, the rape is not a single act that happens one night. It is a long, enduring, very depressing, emotional roller coaster that goes on potentially for years. And I don't think the university understands that. My rape did not end the night that I went to the hospital. It ended the night that I finally got justice. And if I wasn't granted that, I think I'd still be living in it.